Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another event um, uh, on behalf of the Creative Europe Desk Media Office Croatia. It's called European Cinema, Differences That Become Opportunities. It's not by chance that we chose this specific title. We are today celebrating 30 years of the Media Sub program uh, as the only European fund meant for uh, preserving and boosting the European audiovisual industry. And it's not by chance that it happens this week because we are also contributing to the celebration of Europe, culminating on the 9th of May with the Day of Europe. It's for sure that our differences contribute to the richness of European cultural diversity. And since we are approaching the new Creative Euro program 21-27, uh, joining again both culture and media uh, with a slogan, push our boundaries, we want to push our boundaries with this event as well. We want to push our borders, our differences and to see how we can collaborate among each other and how we can develop this further. Thanks to the creative and cultural sectors and thanks to the European field, we can really go beyond our borders, uh, our boundaries. And it's true that um, we need to be divided uh, because we have different production capacities, uh, because uh, we differ uh, in terms of our territories, in terms of our languages, but still we manage to find uh, our own ways uh, to collaborate and to get out of our comfort zone. Uh, the event is divided into two panels, so now we are starting with the first one and uh, the focus is on the case study borderline and for this reason we would like to introduce um, uh, different uh, national perspectives coming from Belgium, Croatia and Norway. In the next second panel, we will definitely focus more on the case study by uh, uh, presenting producers and directors of really a unique project. But before we dive in into all those details and into our future, let's see where we are, where we are now when it comes to the media program. My name is Martina Petrovic and uh, I'm the head of Creative Europe Desk Media Office Croatia. Uh, and I'm going to be your host and moderator of the panel, so enjoy. Let's start with sharing my screen. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so basically, what I want to highlight is how we did it in the period that is now uh, behind us, uh, 2014 and 2020. So uh, in terms of the single project development, um, you see that uh, the majority so, of the fiction project was supported, uh, uh, having a total of 521. Uh, then there is a, a, a place for documentaries, uh, 303, and animation, 157, uh, having a total of 981 uh, projects. When it comes to uh, audiovisual capacity, so uh, you see that uh, Big Five uh, in the future is going to be Big Four without the UK. So the usual suspects are Germany, France, uh, Italy, Spain. And in the previous program, it was UK with 305. Then medium, uh, Belgium and Norway are part of this uh, grouping. Uh, there is a total of nine countries with 313. And small, uh, where Croatia belongs to, with 21 countries, resulting in 363. When it comes by genre, uh, you see that, again, in terms of the financing, the fiction is uh, taking the lead with almost 21 million uh, of euros. Then it's documentary and uh, the last place uh, is taken by animation. Um, in order to understand where we are, uh, I took out also um, the national results um, since uh, the focus is on our three countries. So you see uh, in the single project development, it was Belgium um, being on the first place uh, and with 2.1 million of euros, then Norway with 1.4 and Croatia uh, with 1.2 million of euros. When it comes to the slate finding a bit complicated, 
uh, scheme. Uh, Belgium is still leading with 7.9 million of euros, Norway with uh, 4.8, and Croatia with 700, around 780,000 euros. And when it comes to the TV programming scheme, um, uh, Norway is leading with uh, um, 14 projects, but having a total of 6. Um, 0 0.05 million of euros, then Belgium with 19 projects with 4.1 and Croatia with 290 euros, including also uh, Kinoteca as partnering up in the borderline, the, the focus of our today uh, uh, TV programming scheme. Let me just get out. Okay, stop sharing. Okay, so for the first panel, I have wonderful speakers. Um, I think we lost, uh, oh, Clara is back, perfect. So I want to welcome the first uh, speakers, um, Marie van Inis, uh, project manager for documentary projects at Flanders Film Fund Belgium. Then I have uh, uh, another lady, Clara Nilsson Gruning, uh, film commissioner documentary, film and series at Norwegian Film Institute. Hello. And finally, uh, the only man on the panel, uh, Christopher Peter Marcic, uh, the CEO of the Creation Audiovisual Film Center. So welcome. I think for the first time we have uh, uh, a joint gathering, Belgium, Croatia and Norway. And uh, I'm curious how different are we? And how can we learn from each other and prepare our film professionals for the next uh, period? So in these panel discussions, I'm going to tackle three highlights that are kind of important for, for the overall Creative Europe program. Uh, the number one is definitely collaboration in terms of the co-productions, then greening. So how we can uh, be ready for the sustainable Europe and above all, are we doing anything at national level uh, that can boost uh, uh, overall European sustainability? And last but not the least, it's quality and diversity. How to include in terms of the content and gender, uh, the inclusiveness of all, all projects and all gender. So I will start uh, with Marie. Um, before uh, we continue with the dialogue, let us look uh, at the trailer. second um i would like to get some uh, feedback from the audience because uh, in the technical 
studio they could hear the video we couldn't as the panelists so maybe just uh, uh, a feedback from the audience uh, just write in the chat if you didn't hear that we're going to repeat it um the video in the but anyways um marie uh thank you for um accepting the invitation um i'm very happy and honored i know that it's uh, I don't know when it's not busy the time of the year, but uh, <laughs> due to this COVID, I think we are all overwhelmed. Uh, but uh, uh, the motto uh, of, uh, of the video and uh, of Flanders on Fund is co-production. So um, can we have maybe a better insight? Uh, what do you support when it comes to the co-productions? Uh, who are your usual suspects? Uh, and uh, uh, do you go even beyond? Okay. Okay. Uh, hello. Um, yes. Um, in the the trailer we were seeing is actually a trailer of our of uh, our um, um, of a partner of ours, which is Screen Flanders, which is an economical fund, and so they do a lot of co-production, but really based on economic on 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 um on your spend in flanders so that's they, they um uh that's that's one fund and then we i work for the the, the flanders original fund where we work more on a cultural base uh our um we have two uh main partners uh with whom we do uh co-productions a fixed amount of co-productions each year which is the netherlands uh where we share the language and then, uh, yeah, we're in Belgium, we're a bit uh, a special uh, country. Uh, so we also co-produce within our own country with uh, the Wallonia region, which is the French speaking region. Uh, so we have special calls for, uh, for those two, uh, for th these two co-productions. Uh, so we normally have three calls a year and we do three or four uh, projects um, uh, for fiction and documentary um from each uh, each of these uh partners so it's like a <laughs> uh how do you say it's a repress uh reciprocity yes yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> sorry so um so we have same deadlines uh in, in in both regions or countries um and um and so we, t we put the same amount uh each year uh in each other's projects that, so that's that's one fixed um um uh, scheme but then our our regular um funding application uh for for our majority projects is also open for my minority uh, co-productions from other countries um so that's uh, both for um for films for single projects as for tv series um so um uh, maybe we, we show the slide uh, on the um oh yeah pos okay. possibilities so yeah. i ask um uh, Ten and Vanya, if they can help us out with the slide, co-producing in yeah. Flanders. Yeah. Um, so on the slide, you will see uh, the different possibilities you have if you come uh, to co-produce uh, in Flanders. Uh, so, as I explained, we have our fund, which is the cultural fund. Uh, then there is the Screen Flanders, which is more an economic fund. You can combine both, but uh, to apply for the economic fund, you, it's more for the really big, big uh, uh, projects, big budget projects, because it's um, you can uh, apply, uh, you can ask for a little percentage of what you will spend in the region. So um, it's more for big fiction, uh, fiction movies, uh, series. Um, so we haven't had a lot of documentaries passing through the Screen Flanders um, uh, yet, uh, especially for co-production. I think it's more really for uh, for fiction or for animation. Um, and then there is a tech shelter um, in, in place in Belgium also. So that's uh, that's uh, national. Uh, yeah, the slide went again. Yeah. So so the first you see yeah, it's uh, the tech shelter that's national. That's for the whole of Belgium. Then you have yeah two. Um, you have our F Flemish community. Um, that's a cultural fund. That's where I where I come in. And then there is the 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 Flanders region. Uh, so that's without Brussels. So yeah, we're a very <laughs> complicated country. And there is really the economic fund. Uh, but you can combine all systems uh, as a 
or both as a minority as a as a mi majority project um, um, may i ask you something yes uh, uh when it comes uh, to the media sub program uh do you also introduce uh, when evaluating the projects uh, kind of matching funds so for example if somebody receives uh, uh, media funding do you have some kind of uh, uh, written uh, regulation that uh, it's recommended uh, to be co-financed by by um, flanders film fund or or not not that i know of mm -hmm. okay um for i know for the um, uh so one of the regulation to apply uh, uh, as a film uh, in our um, as a minority film, is that you need to have the the majority um, the, the majority production in place. So your majority your fund in your own country needs to be in place. Um, but that's actually like the only requirement we have for film uh, on a financial base. Uh, and uh, for a series, uh, you also need to have the uh, the majority uh, your majority country in place. And in 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 uh, for uh, for series, we only match uh, our 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 support is is matching uh, the the broadcaster. So then you would need to have a Flemish broadcaster on board. And then depending on what category, if it's fiction, uh, documentary, animation, you can ask, uh, we have multiplicators of what our support can be in, re in relationship to, to what the, the broadcaster would bring in. Uh, but I don't think we have a special, or I'm not aware of special rules uh, regarding uh, if you had media or not, or. Um, of course, um, uh, the more financing you have already in place, uh, the more, um, the stronger your application would be. So, uh. and just the last thing uh, before uh, I uh, move to others, uh, when um, uh, speaking with you a day earlier, you mentioned that uh, there is a kind of a, a written collaboration with your uh, national uh, public television uh, in terms of uh, co-financing the projects uh, mm -hmm. and that they have two options so maybe if uh, you can also uh, mention that yes um uh, for 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 um uh, our uh, how it works in, in in belgium more or less i again i'm not an expert in the details um but um or we have uh our, our national broadcaster and we have uh, commercial broadcasters um and at least the the national broadcaster they uh have like uh, a contract with the government every few years they renew the contract where it specifies how much uh, of their budget they need to spend in local content, um, how many documentaries they need to support. Um, I don't think it's really uh, said like it needs to be so, so many uh, region, uh, local and so many minority projects, um, but, but they have like this quota they, they need they need to uh, to attend to um and then there is um the the the, the cable companies uh, so uh, the, the ones who who broadcast it uh, on uh, who bring it to, to the houses they also have to uh, uh put in a, a certain percentage uh into local content uh, and they have two options to do it. Uh, they can either decide to put it uh, aside themselves and invest in specific pro projects. Uh, so for example, if they have 1 million euros, uh, they can choose to do one or two uh, uh, series that they put in themselves, or they can, uh, or they can uh, put that money in our, in our pots in our uh in our um budget and then and then we put it into uh then through our commissions we can uh, uh we have a higher budget uh, for the moment the biggest players are doing it themselves and the, the more the smaller players um they 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 put their uh, their amount in in our budget and so we can uh, we we, yeah, we can help uh, projects with that money 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I will now like to move to Norway, uh, just to stay on the same line uh, in terms of uh, co-productions. And uh, with me, I have uh, dear Clara. Uh, she's not only, um, how shall I say, successful in Norway, but you are quite fam famous. Uh, you, your professional experience is also uh, covering uh, Sweden and Denmark. And this is quite uh, useful uh, uh, to know because uh, you have a uh, kind of broader picture uh, as a uh, film commissioner uh, how you uh, choose and support the projects especially when it comes to uh, co-productions so um, um, as you worked um, in those three countries now you are uh, doing it for Norway uh, can you may maybe also highlight uh, some important facts and figures um, how you decide uh, and uh, uh, how many how much financing is actually involved Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Martina. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you on the sub program. Uh, it's really great to have this initiative and, and I think it's wonderful to have been invited, uh, especially in this context. And, uh, and I think it's, it's very, very important that we do share uh, all of how the possibilities are and opportunities are cross borders because uh, as we have now been locked down in many places over the year, we forget and we don't meet each other at festivals and markets. Uh, so it's really important to update ourselves on what the actual requirements are, what are changing. I think as many other agencies like the Norwegian Film Institute, which is the national agency responsible for moving the film art and uh, artistic uh, cinematic art forward in Norway, uh, we have also been tackling a lot of uh, crisis funds over the year, uh, trying to keep all the productions and developments going. Uh, but just to give you a little bit of a picture, um, uh, just to understand the, the big goals of the Norwegian Film Institute is really uh, about development, to develop in all different ways, uh, develop the, the industry, obviously, uh, but, but also very much developing and pushing the artistic ambition forward in terms of the cinematic art. Uh, and that can be in all different genres and formats and for different platforms. Uh, I'm responsible for documentary feature shorts and, and series, as well as digital storytelling in whichever form that may be. Um, and like you said, Natina, I've, I've also been a film commissioner at the Swedish Film Institute and the Danish Film Institutes. And I can cover all those three in terms of what the regulations are, um, uh, in terms of the regulations of co-producing with those countries, because they're very much alike in all the Nordic countries, which includes also Iceland and Finland. Uh, so for co-producing, uh, the film institutes all uh, offer uh, co-productions. Uh, and uh, if we focus on documentaries, um, they don't uh, have um, deadlines in Norway. They do in Denmark and in Sweden, no. Uh, in Finland, they also have deadlines um, <clears throat> for applying. And the requirements is basically the same for all. Uh, it's uh, having a, a local, a national uh, co-producer that will apply to the film fund. Uh, and, um, and obviously how we evaluate the project is foremost uh, the artistic admission of the project. But uh, in difference with uh, the national projects, we also look at some of the other things like uh, the collaboration uh, between the, the two production companies, uh, the reciprocity, of course, uh, and also uh, what the creative spend is, how much uh, creative exchange is there, not only um, in, uh, in the project itself, but also can there be uh, other types of exchange? Is one producer really, um, really experienced in animation or providing, uh, providing content for a, a net-based uh, streaming platform and those kinds of, uh, those kinds of experiences that can really grow the industry at large. Uh, so we look at those things. Uh, one thing that is different with applying for co-production funds in Norway uh, is that it's not uh, required to have a um, confirmed 
distribution platform when you apply. Obviously, you have to have it by the time you green light. Uh, but, uh, but that can give uh, producers quite a bit of more flexibility in terms of what platform they may be using, and they can also apply earlier. In Finland, they also recently at AVEC, which is one of their public funds, they also started uh, funding um, development for international co-production, which none of the others do. It's still in uh, just production funding. So that's just sort of the lay of the land. <laughs> um, and um, in terms of um, the, the division of funds, uh, there isn't uh, a set pool for international co-productions at the Nor uh, Norwegian Film Institute. There is a, you know, uh, there is a figure uh, that we have to at least spend <laughs> on, on uh, international co-productions uh, for documentary, uh, which is um, which is about to uh, four hundred thousand euros or so. Uh, and we're two film commissioners for documentaries, so you can apply for any to any of us. And I don't know if um, uh, if you have similar systems um, in Flanders or in other or in Croatia, uh, but in all the Nordic uh, film institutes, the film commissioners make their sole decisions. Uh, so you actually apply directly to uh, a named. Uh, film commissioner that doesn't can, I, can, I just, yes. can I just stop you because this is very very crucial to 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 um, uh, explain when you say that you choose uh, a commissioner and you were on that line what does it uh, exactly mean uh, it means that when the when the national producer applies for fund for production co-production fund uh, or co-production uh, money from the institute they choose which commissioner they want to apply to so they choose me then they apply uh, with a project directly to me uh, and then i make my sole decision about that whether i give it pro uh, the project funds or not uh, you know if i choose uh, to reject it they can uh, they can apply to the other commissioner or they can apply again <laughs> uh, if they change things. So there is no limit on how many times you can apply for the same project as long as there has been some updates to the project in between. But because there is no deadlines in Norway, you could basically apply for funds, uh, get your response within the four weeks that is the limit. Uh, and uh, if you get rejected, you could apply again next month. <laughs> Uh, and either to the same commissioner or to a different commissioner. And that's the same in uh, all the Nordic countries. May I ask you how long is your mandate? Uh, the mandate uh, is uh, at the NFI, uh, NFI in Norway, it's four years. In Sweden, it's uh, tops five, uh, as well as in uh, Denmark. In Iceland, there is no uh, limit. And in Finland, it is four years, I believe. Thank you. And just just uh, uh, to tackle, and then we will go into um, some details. Uh, uh, so you saw that uh, Norway is among our three countries, uh, and it's leading actually in the TV programming scheme when it comes to the media sub program. And uh, this is something what uh, um, your country, your your neighboring countries uh, have in terms of the uh, TV fund. Uh, and it helps boosting your projects uh, and helping out, helping out with the scheme. Uh, so maybe um, also if, if you are aware um, and if you can share with us, uh, how does it work? Yes, absolutely. Uh, in terms of the, the documentary funding at each of the film institutes, we don't differentiate if it's a film for cinema, if it's for streaming platforms, or if it's for television. Generally, most of the films, because it's a bottleneck kind of um, situation and it's only the projects that have the highest ambition and, and artistic quality that actually reaches through, uh, most of those projects are uh, are aimed for both cinema, television, and maybe other VOD um, uh, services uh, afterwards. Uh, at least two or three different types of windows, as well as festivals, of course, and those kinds of things in the beginning. Um, but um, I think it really boils down to how you finance the films. And in Norway, uh, the lucky 
situation is that there isn't only one television station like there are in, in several of the other Nor Nordic countries, which is the public service uh, of each of those countries. Uh, in Norway, we also have um, uh, two other, uh, one, one very national, uh, they basically only take Norwegian content. But there is two other, BGTV, uh, as well as Aftons Posten, uh, which are sort of taking longer formats, but are basically like a, like an Opdocs or uh, New York Times or Guardian type of format. Uh, but they have, uh, VGTV have recently uh, been, um, uh, they've been recently taking a lot more features feature documentaries uh, as, well as, as well as ours. So, so basically, uh, the funds that you seek for co-production could be aimed for television or for cinema or both. Uh, so we don't differentiate. Thank you. Uh, I will now kindly ask uh, my technical <laughs> backup team if we can screen uh, a trailer um of a norwegian film premiering at hot dogs uh, i mean from all those trailers i mean i see that uh, all the, all of them are kind of hits because they were all selected uh, at uh, prestigious uh, film festivals but let us see if we can hear this It seems it doesn't work or something is going on. So, um, uh, um, just a second. No, so I mean, uh, we can actually talk so that we uh, back it up. It was only media which uh, uh, allowed uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, to see and hear. But uh, maybe while we are watching, you can just uh, um, highlight for those who don't know uh, what uh, the film is about. Um, Absolutely. And it's, qu it's quite an emotional one. Absolutely. And the reason why we picked uh, this trailer, uh, even if you can't hear it, uh, is because one is just premiering and basically starting its life in the in the meeting with its audience. And that is always a very special moment, I think, in a in a film's life. Before that, it's been in the bubble of the makers uh, and maybe some test screenings and specifically in this film, which is about survivors of the Utøya tragedy where um, where 63 people were shot, young people were shot uh, during a political rally camp. Um, and, um, and, and these uh, are the stories to uh, sort of uh, remember those who, who left, but more than that, see what an event like that can do for, um, uh, for young people to stand up for themselves and believe in something. Uh, and also become really, really strong uh, speakers and uh, give a lot of inspiration to other young people. So, uh, so that's basically what the film is about. Uh, and I think um, uh, it's, what, it's, it's an interesting example because you never know when you do a film that is based around a national tragedy, if it's gonna be able to travel. And I think these kinds of uh, meetings like markets and pitches and, and all the things that it's been in, uh, you try to figure out <laughs> if it's gonna work or not. And if there are other co-producers that are interested in uh, and also jumping on board, because again, it is a very Norwegian, uh, Norwegian story. Uh, but in some ways, I think uh, it has lent itself. I've been surprised because uh, a lot of festivals, international festivals have been uh, picking it up and being very interested. Uh, and I think it's much because it's about young people. And we're all <laughs> wanting to, to meet young people on the screen and meeting young people in the audience. We're all afraid we're going to lose them, right? 
So I, I I'm not going to say anything else. Sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so I will move to to the Chris uh, Marchich, the CEO of the Creation of the Visual Film Center. What we can do, Chris, is that we we chat and we see in the background um, what we actually shot uh, in Croatia. Uh, I guess that uh, media has uh, overcome with its powers uh, so that we can only hear this video. But in order to have some audiovisual background, I, I, we can also play um, the filming video and we can uh, continue in this direction in terms of co-productions because usually small countries or low audiovisual capacity countries are kind of uh, marked. We only collaborate with our neighbors. I mean, it's our natural. Um, first choice, but we see examples uh, we saw with uh, Kindorama's uh, uh, co-production, Golden Bear this year, uh, Croatian, the Romanian co-production with Norway. This is already the second co-production. The first one was with My Grandpa is an Alien. So we are do moving outside um, uh, our usual uh, suspects. So maybe you can back us up with some uh, info and data and uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much, Martina. I hope you can hear me. Um, uh, first of all, happy birthday to uh, the media program and the subdesk, and uh, happy St. Schumann Day to those who will be celebrating it later this week. Yeah, the Croatian Audiovisual Center has a kind of a triple personality. We support domestic creativity, which includes uh, through of all genres, and it includes co-productions. Um, we, we, we begin with development and work right through uh, the life cycle and, um, and through uh, preservation. We work with the archive to make sure that what's created is preserved. We all know the media sub-program and Martina, which is another, uh, forms another dimension of the Croatian Audiovisual Center. And then we run the uh, Filming in Croatia program, which has been uh, a program designed to uh, attract and really build on um, the historic attraction of Croatia as a location for filming. Um, so we, we provide uh, rebates to um, non-Croatians who come to shoot here based on their local spend. Um, we have seen a trend towards a merging of, uh, of, of projects that come here with the, uh, under the flag of the Filming in Croatia program, but also as um, produ productions or co-productions uh, with Croatians. So uh, taking advantage of uh, support that we provide to co-productions, minority co-productions, uh, as well as the filming program. Um, in terms of uh, the, the past, let's say the past, the, the COVID uh, year, we, we like, um, as, as was said by uh, other colleagues, managed to keep our programs going throughout the, the process. We ran our competitions. We tried to make sure that uh, resources, money um, was dispersed and that um, those who live, uh, make their living in, this, um, in, in these activities were able to survive and continue to create. And we did run all of our programs um last year uh, of course the the overall um level of production activity and then uh, later uh distribution and, and exhibition were severely impacted we we had fewer domestic productions and co-productions than we would have expected i think we had five features produced five croatian features produced last year and nine um, international projects. That's uh, let's say half of an, uh, half of the normal the normal level. But uh, you know, all in all, we did keep the projects going, and we also intervened to try to make sure that once the circumstances permitted, there would be um, sufficient support for productions that they would begin they would be able to resume um, and and continue to uh, to shoot in Croatian. We do have uh, this year uh, uh, an expectation that there will be somewhere between eight and 10 Croatian films shot here this year. And um, 
as many as 20 uh, international projects taking place. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it's shaping up to be a busy year, assuming that um, we maintain control on the virus and are able to continue to work. So that's a kind of a, a, a general uh, general overview of um, of our activities. Uh, we support co-productions um, involving basically all genres. They tend to focus on features. That's certainly um, the area that takes the most resources. Uh, but uh, documentaries and animations are also also um, at uh, are also supported. So it, it runs across the board. We're moving into the area, and we'll get to this, I suppose, in a minute, but uh, um, series are obviously of, of ever greater interest, and we're trying to move our own um, our own orientations in that direction. We, we will be supporting um, development more thoroughly this year with um, script and development uh, getting support now and uh, we hope that uh, in the course of um, next year uh, we'll be moving towards also uh, supporting the production of pilots which should go in the direction of making it likelier that we would be able to also tap into the direction that the media uh, program sub program is going uh, and be able to uh, find co more co-productions in in this space. So Martina, I don't know if you have, uh, if you would like me to address any other specific points. Yeah, yeah I would just like to add that uh, th this TV fund is something that uh, we kind of look upon and we are a bit uh, jealous on how uh, you collaborate greatly with your t televisions in, in Flanders and, mm. and in Norway. Uh, and uh, just a small uh, insight. So um, uh, TV programming is going to be really boosted in the, in the new media program program so uh, there will be some extra points when it comes to collaboration beyond your usual uh, collaborators so uh, for this reason we are here and discussing and and especially representing the project which gathered uh, like what five six countries uh, in the borderline and uh, this is something that is going to be highly evaluated um, as a success story so i will now stay with chris uh, so that we go on in in the second highlight and it's regarding the gender uh, and uh, diversity uh, this is also something that is going to be highlighted in the new program and uh, projects uh, involving more women uh, in terms of directors and producers uh, uh, female stories uh, are going to be encouraged and boosted. Um, I am aware that uh, we have been working on a um, uh, study when it comes to the creation, uh, representation of, of women in the creation of the visual film industry. Maybe, uh, I know it's not yet done, but maybe you can give us some um, highlights. Um, how it's a sneak preview. Um yeah, I, I can. Uh, we are indeed uh, in the final stages of uh, reviewing a study that was commissioned last year. Um, three eminent uh, experts um, were leading the, the study with support from our organization. And the, the, the idea was to produce quantitative analysis and qualitative uh, on, the, on our scorecard let's say in, in the area of diversity uh, and gender balance and equality um, since the inception of house so since this uh, film center has been operational um, in 2012 and uh, they had access to uh, a lot of information a lot of data uh, on what we financed and uh, in particular um, the extent to which women were represented in various categories. And um, I suppose that um, we, we are generally in line with what we see coming out of other European uh, countries. Uh, women are underrepresented uh, in, in the category of, for example, uh, directors um, and overrepresented in you know the, the, the 
category of uh, makeup artists or you know so it's 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 not it's not a shocking um, it's not the the quantitative findings aren't shocking I don't think to for anyone who follows the the, the trends um, but I should say that in in general I think that the trends are moving in the in the right direction just too slowly and um, the qualitative analysis was was uh, undertaken um, to hear out uh, participants in in our uh, production, uh, and um, we had a lot of respondents. Or they were guaranteed anonymity, um, women and men, uh, and uh, those those comments which are now being organized let's say into a, into uh, into shape that could be part of our final study which i hope will be in a position to release within the next month or so it really is nearly completed um they will give us pointers on where we need to make improvements uh, we have we have a, a different system to what was described in norway we don't have a single commissioner who chooses uh, and has the authority to select projects we have artistic advisors who make recommendations so we also looked at whether uh, whether th that since those rotate every two years let's say and we've had uh, historically more men than women whether that made a difference we now have a, a, a real balance in the uh, advisors um, and uh, you know we hope that through that we can we can generate uh, more of a balance, let's say, in, uh, in terms of the outcome. Uh, and if we don't, then you know we need to understand why and what we can do, uh, what we can do to deal with that. Deal with that. We also, we also um, sorry, I'm getting, I was getting an echo. There. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we need to kind of shorten it up. Sorry, okay, I okay, like yeah. Hear. I just Belgium. wanted to say that uh, you know the, we work with uh, we we work with the. European Film Agency Group, EFAD in Brussels, on this issue and uh, on greening, uh, where they are very active and uh, both as a source of information and as an advocate on behalf of all of us. So I'll close with that. Thank you. And just to go online with that, uh, since I'm also preparing uh, br the brochure of the Croatian media results, I also came up to the uh, um, data that uh, almost uh, behind every single application for the media program, there is one woman, and uh, mm -hmm. more than fifty percent of women were successful <laughs> when it comes to the creation of media applications, yeah. and they are representing the leading position. So um, yes, congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, let's go back to Marie. Uh, so for Marie, we have a, a slide uh, representing uh, representation of women in uh, Flanders uh, audiovisual industry. So I kindly ask um, ladies uh, uh, if they can screen it. Uh, yes. Maybe you can also start. Yeah, okay. Um, so uh, what we have, of course, uh, gender and diversity uh, in uh, our industry is, is uh, a hot topic uh, in, uh, in, in, in Belgium too. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, but what we, what we already looked into is uh, based on the, the last tr three years uh, in, our, uh, in our applications. Um, what's the balance uh, just uh, in in, on uh, screenwriters and directors? Because that's the, the functions that are always uh, in our database uh, and that don't change along the way. So uh, that, that was the, the, most, the most accurate uh, already to have a look in. Um, so there you can see the, the, left, uh, the left one is the, the screenwriters, the right one is the directors and the different categories uh, animation documentary fiction uh, film lab is more experimental film and then innovation uh, which is in the bottom uh, and you can see the, the different years and and all every in every uh, the the blue ones are the applications and uh, the the green ones are uh, the actual projects that got the support so where we can already see that's uh, actually on every on uh, on every level um the support uh, the um, um, 
the percentage of supported projects with women is bigger than the application. So where we can, it's, it was good for us to see that uh, we don't negatively discriminate um, uh, women uh, filmmakers, that it's not because that it's not in the commissions that they they get stopped uh the problem is on some on some categories the the, the program the problem is in the in the income of the projects of the applications we can see uh that in uh in in documentary we're um quite okay for the moment we're at uh, 39 percent uh of a female of a female um screenwriters and 47 percent of uh, female uh, directors um, in more experimental and innovative projects were even higher. Uh, the most, like everywhere, I think the biggest problem is in uh, the fiction department, where we are around 25% of uh, women uh, screen, uh, screenwriters and uh, directors. So, um, for since a few years, we're we're thinking uh, at our commission like. What, what can we do to to approve this um and it's uh we have a specific work group uh some colleagues that are really working with with uh with our sector with uh experts to really see like do we need quota if we need quota how do how do we impl implement them are, are there other ways to uh to 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 uh, improve those numbers um the first time uh last year we had a, a, sp a specific scheme we organized uh to uh, help our industry in these uh, difficult uh, COVID times, where we did uh, a, a slate funding uh, for, for a national project. It's the first time we did it, where uh, production companies could apply for um, uh, uh, screenwriting support uh, or development support for three to five projects. It could be a mix of all genres, all um, all lengths, uh, all formats uh, together, but it had to be between three and five projects. If they had three projects, they ha they need to have at least one project with a female filmmaker, with a film female maker. If they had four or five projects, they need to have at least two. And it was the first time we experimented with uh, with quota, with soft quota maybe. Um, and um, yeah, it was. I think it, it was interesting. Um, but immediately you see the, the pros and the contras, the, because also uh, some uh, screenwriters said, said to us like, yeah, suddenly we get a call from a producer and, and they felt a bit like the, um, you know, um, that they were just calling them before because they were, were a woman and putting them as a, the third screenwriter and they, they weren't really at the base of the project. But sometimes, you know, you need to force things a bit that way and then they get to know him, them and maybe next time they'll, they'll work together on a more, on a more, uh, on a bigger base. But it's, it's discussions that are currently going on in, in, in Belgium and in Flanders, like how will we deal with this in the, in the future? Um, um, uh, just as in, uh, uh, unlike in Norway, we work of, um, in, with commissions uh, to select our projects, and there uh, every commission uh, has five members, and uh, we always make sure to have at least uh, two women. So we always have the balance two three between women, um, women and men. And also we try to find people with a diverse background in each commission, but it's not always easy to match all the boxes. Um, but uh, yeah, especially the, 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 the man woman uh, um, balance in our commissions is, uh, is a very important one for us that uh, we, uh, yeah, we keep in mind uh, all the time. Um, also on, on, on diver diversity, um, since uh, 2019, every uh, application, every majority application, so not the minority co-productions, but all our uh, local projects need to have um, a note on the diversity in their application. So it's not like really a checklist, like uh, um, uh, do we have uh, this or that, but it's more like uh, we ask them to write a note of about two pages on how they uh, uh, um, think about diversity in several aspects. So it can be on story, it can be on how you put your crew, your cast together, it can be on on, on, on reaching your public, how you, are you gonna 
um, reached out to, to, to another public, to a specific public. And we, on our website, we, we have like all, all kinds of, we're always feeding like more um, uh, uh, checklists and, and, and inspiration uh, that um, uh, producers can use. Also that are, uh, as, as a lot of groups are working on these teams uh, for the moment, a, lo a lot of inspiration comes in, new, new, uh, uh, new things come in uh, all the time. And so we, we try to feed producers to, uh, and so maybe in the beginning we saw that those notes were more like, you know, a, produ pro a producer that needs to write something about it. And then, and then they say, yeah, we're going to do this and this, and, and, and that you, 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 you see that they tick, try to tick the boxes. But you know, after a few years, you see that it becomes more organic, and that maybe some of the changes are actually coming. It's, it's. I think there is still a very long way to go. But, um, um, but when there is very, a will, there is a way. So yeah, there is, there is definitely a will, and we feel that, um, yeah, commissions are also getting a lot more um, um, attentive to it. Uh, so uh, yes, when they read projects, they will not only look like okay, is the, is is it interesting? Is the content okay? But maybe like okay, on these subjects, I see you only have uh, white white male uh, experts. Uh, aren't there any uh, more diverse choices you could make? Uh, um, even if it's if it's if it's not the first names that come to mind on this this topic, um, you know, you feel that 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 we are trying to. Um, yeah, to, to get to get them to think about it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, we are just a bit running out of time, and I know that uh, Clara has uh, another appointment. But what, what I'm going to do now, I know that there are two quite dense uh, slides. Uh, since I included um, Clara your uh, data in my PowerPoint, uh, I'm going to just move quickly uh, to the presentation. Um, just a second. I can start speaking if you want to. Yes, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I think, um, I think yeah, it's really a uh, sick wing. Uh, um, I think it's very think it's important very to important remember to in this context. In this context. Uh, it's still it's echoing. Still echoing. Just a second, because I cannot do everything at once. Uh, just a second, just a second. I need to first unmute myself. Well, what I'm just, trying to say is uh, that I think it's really crucial that we understand that women uh, is not a minority and that should not be treated as one. Uh, it should not be special programs or anything like that just because you're women. But the way there uh, is uh, taking action. Uh, and I think it's very important to take radical approaches in order to something uh, to change because otherwise it won't and in in the terms of equality um, there has to be somebody giving up some space in in order for others to 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 get some place uh, to start it's not only about women taking space uh, it's actually about also men giving some up uh, and to me uh, I also get a little provoked sometimes when we mix the two uh, subjects of gender equality and diversity because to me they are very two di different things uh, and uh, but I won't go into that right now um, but in terms of uh, what we do uh, at the Norwegian Film Institute I think the Swedish Film Institute has been the leading star in terms of uh, having a very very uh, very clear goal of 50-50-2020 which is about having 50% uh, women, 50% men in leading creative roles uh, by 2020. That wasn't approached completely, uh, but uh, Norway has also taken. Uh, in ter terms of um, not trying to echo to what you other uh, people have said, but it's about the screen, uh, the amount on the screen being uh, uh, who is who is ha having the leading roles and, and uh, you know having equality on the screen, having equality in creative roles uh, like uh, director, producer, and script writers, uh, autographers, and editors. In some cases, mostly we have been looking three.
posts. And then, then one thing that I think is even more crucial than the amount of uh, how women versus men gets to make their film is how much money they get. Uh, not only get less money, also ask for less money. Uh, they don't think that they have the same chance a lot of times uh, for their production, so they sell themselves a little lower. Uh, and how do we, as supporters and funds, help equalizing these things? Personally, I, I always look very, very carefully at budgets when there are women uh, directors involved. Uh, and a lot of times I raise their budget or my you know, contribution to their budget uh, in order for them to, to pay themselves a decent salary. Uh, so those are just small things I think you can do. Uh, and then obviously uh, it's about the stakeholders, uh, the recruitment of stakeholders and gatekeepers, who they are, what they look at uh, is also really important. And in the film institute, in the Norwegian film institute, now we're two women, uh, uh, two women film commissioners for documentaries. Uh, uh, a lot of times there is one woman, one man, whatever, non-binary. Non uh, in Sweden, it's always half and half. Uh, Denmark, it can, it can be different. I was there, we were three women uh, commissioners for documentary films at the same time. So uh, it's a little different. Uh, Finland, I know it's 50-50 and Iceland only has one. one. So th those are some of the things that I th think are uh, important. And to give you some figures, um, I haven't been at the uh, a few months. Uh, but when I left the Swedish Film Institute, I looked back on my slate, what I had funded. I'd funded 80 films, uh, 50 long features and shorts. Out of the 50, 2% uh, women uh, directors and 48 men. Out of the shorts, I think it was 58% women. Uh, and uh, and one of the years when I also looked at, we obviously do statistics about this all the time, but I looked at um, the relation between how many applies uh, and gets funded. And that year, <clears throat> I think it was 2019, there was 54% men that applied for funding and then obviously 40, 46% women. But out of those applications, there were 52% of the women that applied that received funding. Uh, so I think it's a look at those ASPEN parameters as well. And, uh, and, and again, really looking at the amounts uh, in order to equalize the power within the industry. How do we work with that? How can we inspire and how can we give uh, to, to women uh, in leading roles? So I know that you're out of time right now, so I'm not going to go into the green or uh, the diversity. Yeah, uh, because those are the topics that uh, uh, are quite important to, to tackle. And uh, what uh, I can use as an opportunity uh, um, to really thank you for participating in the panel, but when it comes to the greening, it, it's going to be something uh, that uh, Europe, through the media sub program, is going to uh, award in terms of the automatic points. And this is something that uh, uh, our producers need to start uh, uh, get ready for that. So if you have it at the national level already taken care of, then there will be no, it's not going to be so difficult for them. But uh, uh, for some countries, it might be uh, difficult how to introduce different greening policies in terms of overall uh, uh, projects. Um, um, we came to an end. I mean, I can go on. Uh, I, I, I wrote like so many <laughs> different things, but uh, I just hope that uh, we, we stop in this weird uh, gathering and that uh, we all look forward to um, really live meetings, uh, what we really need um, and uh, that is going to happen quite soon. I uh, thank you for, uh, for your time uh, and patience and uh, looking forward to our collaboration soon. For the audience, uh, please stay uh, with us. Uh, we are coming back soon uh, with the case study, The Borderline. Thank you. Have a nice day for those who are leaving. Thank you. Bye.
عشان يمطيها بطيء Hello, please. Uh, uh, I kindly ask everyone to mute themselves in order to avoid the echo and all those technical um, uh, surprises. Mm -hmm. I just hear that somebody else is still having the video on. If you can mute yourselves so that we don't have an echo. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. So, dear audience, welcome back. Um, so uh, we start with the second Hello, panel. Please. I mean, uh, the the just everybody mute yourselves because we will experience echo, and I will hear myself twice. Thank you. So uh, we uh, come to the second panel. So the the essence of uh, our meeting today, and uh, it is a unique success story. Uh, in terms of being supported by TV programming scheme uh, media. And uh, uh, it, when it comes to the uniqueness, it means that uh, it is the first omnibus of TV documentary seri series. And to have such a variety of countries collaborating together and above all, um, collaborating with uh, beyond their borders. So uh, for uh, 30 years of media and for the day of Europe, uh, it's quite intriguing to have the case study of the borderline. And uh, uh, when it comes to the money and how much you actually withdrew from the media, it's a total amount of 225 euros. It consists of six episodes, which uh, I needed to write because they are quite uh, uh, diverse uh, from the wire uh, creation in Slovenian border, for, from where the world ends, Lithuanian and Belarus, four seasons in day, Northern Ireland, Ireland, Raji or Samiland, Norway versus Sweden, Ribos, Kaliningrad uh, uh, and Lithuania, and Liberland, no man's land, so called, but uh, uh, taking place at the utopic border of uh, uh, Croatia and uh, Serbia. So. Um, it consists of six episodes, uh, five production companies, but uh, in particular, there are uh, three different episodes we're gonna tackle today because those are the ones that uh, work together in terms of the media uh, TV programming scheme. Uh, and uh, I welcome, uh, first of all, with uh, the team and the person actually who, uh, who's, uh, who started this idea and the project, uh, uh, joining with director Annabelle Verbecke, uh, Frederick Nikolai from Off World. Uh, then we have from, uh, you are from Belgium. Then we have from Croatia, uh, Tika Clara Gudac and her producer, Ljubos Dilarovic from Kinoteca. And uh, finally, we also have uh, the Norwegian representative, uh, Karl Emil Rikardsen uh, from the company Relation of Four uh, and the episode uh, Raiji. So, um, what I, I would like to take a lots of questions, but uh, before uh, we get into the debate, uh, let us start uh, with Four Seasons in Day. So we have a wonderful uh, team from Belgium, Annabelle and uh, Frederick. At the moment, uh, the episode Four Seasons in Day is actually premiering at Hot Dogs. Uh, it's taking place right now, so we keep the fingers crossed uh, for some awards. And uh, may I kindly ask you to share with us uh, 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 trailer first so that we uh, have also the visual look uh, and to get inside what is about. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> little question. So I share my screen. Yes, you have the little uh, window crossed with the red line. This one, I think, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Whatever you press, just don't get out of the stream. So those little <laughs> circles you can press, <laughs> but don't I understand. Get out. I will talk a little bit because I need to. Yes, to... yes, then no worries, no worries. So uh, maybe also we, we let uh, Annabelle to speak first. Okay. Uh, because you are also um, a co-writer. And is it your, actually, how, how did you join uh, Frederick in the project? Do, have you already collaborated with Frederick before? 
Uh, yeah, I collaborated before with him. As you can see from the back, um, I uh, made a We Will Remember Them, which was my first mid-length uh, documentary. So I already know uh, how to work with uh, Frederick. Um, so it was not the first project and it's not the last either, as we are uh, still working on a new project, uh, which is about newcomers that are trying to find a proper job here in Belgium. Uh, and um, the director I am supervising director of a documentary series, uh, again, documentary series of six episodes, uh, and each uh, episode is directed by a non-European director, and they follow the footsteps of uh, those uh, newcomers uh, who are trying to find a proper job here in Belgium. Okay, sorry. Uh, how are we with sharing the screen? Yes, uh, it should be fine now, so I will share my screen. Unable. No, not yet. I'm sorry. Okay, um, we talk. The link uh, of the trailer. Is that an idea? We can also send it to the audience. I will ask my technical backup. Mm -hmm. But um, if I may ask you, Annabel, um, uh, the story is not uh, regarding anything to. I mean. Uh, related to the Belgium borders. It's yeah. actually related to the Northern Ireland, Ireland border. Mm -hmm. And I like the, in the pitching document, the tags, uh, the taglines, the troubled borders, Brexit, uh, Catholicism versus Protestantism. How did you, uh, and why did you choose uh, uh, this particular border and not the one, for example, existing uh, in Belgium? But uh, let's, let us try to see the trailer. Ah, it works. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, stay. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, it's something with privacy that makes it possible for me to share the screen. Um, give me one second. It's on. Yeah, it's not the Zoom, it's not the Microsoft Teams, it's not the Blue Jeans. Um, what else do we have? Webex, <laughs> but it's the live stream. So each platform has its own rules and they decide when they want to play with or without the sound. But um, uh, yeah. I think we are all prepared to adjust to... Um, Maybe I have an idea. Wait, do again the, uh, the clean tap, the two. I also would like to mention to our audience that we will um, also post um, in the Facebook uh, chats um, all the trailers that we were supposed to screen so that you really hear also what's behind. Uh, now, uh, Frederick, is this your screen? This is my screen. Yeah. Shall we try? Yeah. <laughs> Can you still see it like this? Press play full window and mute. Thank you. Claire, do you know where you are? No. Do you have any idea of where you are? Or where we could be going? We're all going on a summer holiday. Is it starting to go? Can I start to go like so there's a border in the water so far. Security check. Um, what nationality are we? Some northern people. Some people. I don't know. What do you like? Is it border or something? I don't recognize the border. I wasn't brought up to recognize the border. According to some people, there is no border line, but there is, there is a border. Alright, everyone, have your seatbelt, guys. I don't know, let's see how the weather changed so much. Because you're watching a movie, and your movie's over. Watch it. What you say is so 
I am born British, like yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the way I will remain until the day I die. It's hard to believe come the end of the year that these mountains will be in Europe and we'll not be on this side. In my heart, I know why I'm Irish. I will never fail British. I don't care if they take over the whole world. They will not be able to take my Irishness away from me. Never. Look at that. There's been times when there's been a border, there's been times when there's no border. The land never changes, but the people change. Yes. So I'm going to jump on Frederick now <laughs> with questions. So uh, uh, it's, really, it's really remarkable to see uh, so many different stories in one omnibus. And it's quite uh, current and relevant to talk about uh, the borders. How we, do we have a, a problem with border? Uh, Croatia is uh, in the European Union, but still part of Schengen. Um, there are some borders that uh, haven't existed before. Uh, now they're kind of imposed. Um, and um, basically, I saw through the pitching document that you are the author uh, of the project, but also co-writer of all episodes. And it was not easy to combine uh, all the stories, all different production companies. So how did everything start it? Yeah, maybe I can tell a little bit about the start of the project. Um, I was for another project in Estonia um, for some research. And as you know, one of those little Baltic states, Estonia, has a border with Russia. And I was actually on that Russian border at the seaside on the shore. And uh, the border between the European Union and Russia is just a little river. You can perfectly wade through. You can perfectly go to the other side. Now, the other side, also people were on the beach, having fun. Uh, but I was not allowed to go on the other side. Moreover, there was a placard saying that when you pass here, you can be arrested by Russian border control, even they're allowed to shoot on you. And that made me think and reflect about the freedom we actually have gained in Europe. I can come to Croatia without having a, a visa and all those big checks that, that, I, that I need to be go through uh, to be able to, to travel to Slovenia, to Austria. Um, and this is a, a huge amount of freedom that today, from my opinion, is a, a little bit under pressure because uh, due to so many crises, um, we, 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 the, the national IDs, our identities is, let's say, questioned again. And many people feel that it should be redefined. And um, I was thinking there was no better place than questioning identity than on the border with another country. And I was really interested how people living at the border were defining themselves and how they were defining those people at the other side of the border and how they in, were thinking about their past, their current life and their future. And um, for me, it was also a question about uh, uh, relativity of time. I mean, we all think we are, we are so important and we, are, we, are, we take such a big place in history, but actually our lives are very short and we might divide the landscape in two, but yeah, in, in 200, 300 years, it might be somewhere completely else. Uh, the world can change very rapidly. So my film is a little bit to think, uh, or the, the borderline project started a little bit to think about that relativity, relativity of mankind, about borders, about cultures, about languages, and at the same time to think about the richness of our European continent, the diversity. And, 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 and the freedom we have today. I was just writing my thoughts. Um, yeah. um, but uh, uh, how, how did you then approach uh, Lyubo 
uh, and Carl and, and others uh, uh, in the episodes. Uh, how did you choose them and um, thought that they are the right produce, co-producers for your project? Mm -hmm. No, actually, uh, Brussels is a, 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 an international city. And my main idea was uh, that we should work with international people to make those films because um, it, I wanted to work with local people, people that know the border regions, that know the culture, that speak the language. And in that way, we would be able to make uh, in-depth and sustainable films um, to avoid any journalistic approach, going there for 10 days, 20 days and going home and, uh, and that's it. No, we wanted a long-term production. Um, and in Brussels, many people are living. So uh, there was uh, a creation production manager, uh, Eva Talic, uh, living in Brussels. Uh, and she knew Lyubo uh, uh, and, and Tiha, and she introduced uh, us. And so we started to collaborate. Uh, Kala, I remember well that I just picked up the phone and I called Kala. We did not know each other. But somebody recommended him, and I begged him to join the project because uh, uh, um, I must say, producing such a series, it, it was not a walk in the park. I mean, uh, my the co-producers can confirm that that uh, that yeah, there were moments uh, that it was uh, very in, in yeah, very insecure that we would ever make, ever finish this this, this series. I mean. Being able to convince uh, Foon's broadcasters um, with such a concept, it's very, very difficult. And, and um, I'm extremely happy that we are talking about it today. Uh, if you would have asked me this two years ago, my feeling would have been completely different. I am very honest about it. And I'm happy that we are premiering and yeah. having this discussion uh, now while we are having uh, uh, two episodes already um, in, in, at an international film festivals. Uh, and just to come back um, quickly to Annabelle, um, how um, did you choose this specific story of Ireland? We all know that uh, it's a bit hectic after uh, UK uh, left uh, the European Union. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, from your personal uh, point of view, um, uh, why did you choose it? Okay. Um, in fact, I, I, it's not that I'm a Brexit expert, not at all. I was not uh, really, uh, how would I say it, uh, really uh, into this uh, politics, but I was interested in an actual border, um, how uh, a border now could, um, I mean, sorry, I sometimes I have to find my words, but um, I, I was interested in, there's so much fuzz about uh, that specific border, um, and I was really curious to hear the stories of uh, people living alongside that border. Also, the fact that this border has been existing for many, many years, and um, yeah, it became more and more invisible. But uh, because of uh, now that the whole uh, politics came over, uh, people would take more and more, uh, would think more and more about their own identity uh, because of all the measurements that are being taken. I don't know if this is a good explanation, but um, yeah, in, in fact, my first uh, thoughts were to really focus on an actual border. Uh, so we'll have, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let us move to, to the second uh, story. Um, it's, uh, uh, it used to be called Kupa, now it's called uh, The Wire. Uh, I have uh, the creation team uh, here, uh, the director uh, Tika Klara Gudac and uh, Ljubos Djelarevic, producer from uh, Kinoteka. Um, so uh, when actually discussing uh, uh, with, uh, with Ljubo, um, I was also intrigued because he kind of gave me a sneak preview of your pitching document and it's quite, uh, um, quite something to, to present. Uh, and uh, um, when it comes to the creation story, uh, how um, maybe we start with Tiha, you came 
you approached Lubo with the story or Lubo engaged you because we remember your last documentary, uh, Naked, being so successful and really um, it stayed and remained with our hearts because you bring this always personal uh, emotional touch uh, to your stories. But uh, let me hear you now uh, from the first hand. Um, how did you choose um, the story and then who approached whom? Just need to unmute yourself. Uh, hi, again. So thank you, Martina, and thank you for having us. As Frederick has said, I mean, the whole project uh, started with him and his idea with the, about the borders and with Ivat Kalitz, who was, as, as Frederick explained, he approached Ivat Kalitz for the Croatian thread. At the time I was uh, working in Kinoteca uh, in Ljubo's company as an executive producer on different projects because that's another field of my work and as uh, Eva is a good friend of Ljubo, she, correct me Ljubo if I'm wrong, if I remember something incorrectly, she approached Ljubo as a potential Croatian co-producer as a company and uh, from my conversations with Eva, what she said is that she was a a fan of my, I mean, she she felt connected uh, emotionally to my first film, and as far as I know, this is how I was I was suggested as a director. So uh, at the time when we were approached, uh, the idea of Croatian Slovenian border was clear as one episode. the The journey was long before it was confirmed that it will come to life, and uh, there was a broader idea. What what was in focus already when we were approached is that is was the wire. The Schengen wire, which was being erected on the Croatian-Slovenian border, we were investigating a larger scope of, of uh, possible locations and protagonists and stories and so on. And then we focused on Kupa in particular. Uh, we did a bit more work here uh, in Croatia in the beginning. I, uh, anyone correct me, but uh, this is as far as I remember. We did quite a lot of work here. Uh, when we were developing the whole project, uh, I did a, a pre-production teaser already in 2016 for the for Kupa slash Borderline with the other uh, director of Borderline uh, project, Anna Shevchenko. So uh, that was used also to pitch the project. And basically with that, we decided to focus on Kupa. That was in 2016. And then through contact with people, development on the field, research and reality versus what we had in mind we then went into filming on croatian slovenian border most intensely from 2019 until 2020 and we also due to the change on the border and illegal migrants actually starting to arrive from the hotspot on the migrant uh, route which was croatia bosnia border another smaller part was then shot there as these two borders became relevant in terms of Europe, uh, European Un Union, Schengen, the gates of Europe and so on. And that's the story. And now we have uh, uh, the episode uh, uh, selected for DocFest Doc uh, in Munich. But maybe I ask Lubo before, uh, thank you, uh, Tika, uh, before we continue to see the trailer of the wire. Maybe Frederick has it. Okay, Frederick. <laughs> Just Lubo, unmute yourself. Thank you. في كروات من فوق احنا مطبينا بالنهر نهر ما بين كرواتيا وسلوفينيا كنا احنا حنموت نفسنا هو ب... حسن اخذوا النهر كثير Kaj se tiče migrantov, 
ganiše noben vidu, so sicer hodijo, ampak se ljudi na deleče gibajo. Pa nisem še noben, bom nič naredili v Sloveniji. So much I try to cross the border. I have now 10 times. Vsa ima en mohavet, alhamdulillah, nah, nah, nah. Tamo vnutra je dan i jedan dole. Ne, to je, ne znam, kinesko je to. Enostavno so prišli in začeli žico postavljati. Po zasebnih zemljiščih, brez vnaprejšnjega dogovora. Žica je za nas prebivalce bila šok. To me spominja, ko smo bili v Auschwitzu, na nekaj takšnega je tam. Kako bi zvao? Ne, ne, kaj mi je bil nekaj, pa sem jaz izgubil. Tam hodijo dol. Ne moremo ločiti pa njene ograje na polovico, da nekje bo, nekje ne. Če boste izrecno nasprotovali postavitvi te panelne ograje, pa moramo odkrito povedati, da s tem tudi prizemljate del tveganja. Ali bo hočete še to, kar imamo uničiti? Vi žico postavljate za nas, ne postavljate za migranti. Kontrastro! Kontrastro! And we are back. So I turn, I switch to Lubo. Um, so uh, I saw uh, that the, the episode concretely uh, was supported by the Creation Audiovisual Film Center, but uh, the rest of the funding was coming from uh, Belgium, Flanders. Um, so how actually uh, was this uh, process of getting and requiring the financing for the episode difficult? Um, how did me media, TV programming scheme support? Uh, helped the project to uh, be realized and uh, is there anything that you would like to highlight that still needs to be approved um, at our national level maybe well um, this project is probably any other big project uh, this is just like a marathon with uh, with obstacles and uh, when uh, Frederick, uh, when we first met Frederick, we, we went to to island of Pag and spent one uh, great weekend and made a, a quick plan about how project uh, could or should look like. And uh, first, uh, we applied for uh, at Croatia National Fund. Somebody saying to turn my volume up. Okay, am I louder now? Maybe uh, we applied to Croatian uh, fund to get um, uh, TV series development money, and this was the the first money that actually was uh, brought in the project. Uh, but uh, your question regarding uh, the whole finance finan financing uh, scheme or plan, maybe I'm not uh, the, the right person to answer it because as a minor co-producer, uh, my stress in the end is not that that big. We actually got from uh, our film fund everything that we could have got. We, we got uh, uh, minor co-production and we got, uh, we got TV series development money. And that was uh, about it from, from fund. That was the maximum. Um, but the whole mastermind beh behind the financing is actually Frederick about how whole, uh, 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 whole uh, uh, scheme was or is functioning. Was it difficult to share um, different roles and responsibilities um, during development of the project? This is going to be a question uh, I'm going to ask you all, but uh, let me hear um, you, Ljubo, first. No, because I've, I've pointed, um, as a minor co-producer, you don't have so many obligations in that sense. And uh, Frederick wanted uh for all the co-producers and uh, local teams to be focused only or on our episodes uh and uh, 
a part of a uh, um, smaller amount of money or, or part of the budget was focused on uh, each of the episodes episodes and uh, one part was um, supposed to go to the episode that at that point didn't didn't get any funding from maybe other co-producers or they needed already uh, but you know tiha uh, made a, a really unbelievable job with research and uh, it was 35 days of shooting through the whole through the whole year and uh, our focus was uh, only on the wire wire episode i mean i never intervened on norway episode you know it was only only creation part every uh, every co-producer for for their own episodes uh, and if I may just add, uh, besides um, uh, yourself, uh, I mean, besides Croatia being responsible for the uh, episode uh, of The Wire, there is also the Slovenian uh, co-producer involved just specifically yes. on the Croatian... Uh, Actually, if I can say something about that, it was a little bit of concept. Huh? We have a collection of six films. Um, it is very hard to sell a series. When you go to a broadcast, uh, I go to Slovenian broadcast, for example, and say, here, there's a series, and you have to take them all. It's going to be very hard. The project starts because we in Belgium, we have a fund that is supporting documentary series. So there, it somehow started the concept. So by considering it more like a collection of six films, it was much more easy to, to attach partners who say, yeah, I'm only taking one film. I must say, for many funds and, 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 and partners, it was sometimes confusing. Uh, yeah, but what is it now? Is it a series or is it a single film? Yeah, no, it is both. And, uh, and, uh, and also, to tell one of the reasons why it took so long is was that, that um, uh, you remember maybe where you were uh, the moment you heard about the, the Twin Towers were attacked. You, had, no, you remember exactly the place where you were. I remember exactly the place where I was the moment I got a, a little email telling me that Arte was not joining the project at the end uh, uh, because uh, we were in, in negotiations with them. And it was all very good and nice and it was a, a, an investment of 300,000 euros, something like, which was very important for the project. And all of a sudden, commissioning editor and, and the people involved we're not involved anymore, not working anymore for Arte, and sorry, we are not continuing with this project, was the email. That was for me a very difficult moment because uh, uh, we are all, or maybe Norway, maybe not so small as we are, but Belgium, Croatia, Slovenia, Lithuania, we are countries with a low production capacity. We need sometimes big partners on board. And actually, we all have to be very proud at the end. We did this series without a big country or a huge part on board. Actually, Creative Europe is, the, in terms of, of, of financial investment, the biggest investor of, of all. I mean, most funds and broadcasts are investing bits and bytes. So the, the whole financing plan of this, this project is a, is a huge patchwork of, 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 a, of a little fund here, a little fund there, economical, creative funding, a little broadcast. So uh, that was also one of the reasons that uh, this took so much time. If I may just if I may just uh, uh, add on that, um, uh, Belgium and Norway are belonging to medium capacity, so are a bit uh, level up <laughs> in terms of the co in terms of the financing. But uh, uh, when it comes uh, to media program, your um, uh, TV uh, series, uh, The Borderline, is going to be the perfect example of what they are, are going to look for in in the future 21 27 because when applying from belgium for example for such projects you will get extra uh, award points uh, uh, collaborating with all those different uh, smaller countries and territories so uh, just keep on continuing in this way and you will be rewarded for that um, uh, so just to stay on the same line uh, we have also uh, the norwegian episode so i learned today carl that kale is your nickname but you prefer to be called carl emil rickardson am i now right 
you need to unmute yourself. You need to un unmute. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how shall we write him? Carl, unmute yourself. Car, can you hear us? We cannot hear you. Sorry, it didn't. Yeah. It, sorry, it didn't. It didn't work on this. Uh, on the pressing the M, I had to press the the the, the, the toy on the screen. Yeah, yes. I already saw your wonderful poster in the back because I was searching, uh, did a little research, and I found it very interesting. Your previous film that is available now to 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 watch uh, online and Camel uh, uh, being a hidden horse, but uh, a wonderful, a wonderful uh, film for children. Um, uh, so, uh, where are you uh, when it comes to the Norwegian? And I say Norwegian episode because you are leading uh, the episode uh, between Norwegian and Swedish border, and it's called uh, Raji, uh, and uh, it's uh, in this Sami language, uh, and uh, you asked me to uh, change it uh, from Sami and to Raji. But uh, um, would you be so kind to maybe give us a little insight um, what is the story about, since we don't have a trailer? Oh, you have a trailer. Okay. So you have, we have a trailer, perfect. So maybe we, we check the trailer and then we continue. Mm Silkal makkarkin toutua, että mukalkkani lähki ruohelas vai taatsa vai. Raaji tappe saamista lepäällä hektuissa. Yes, yes. 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 Kun se alkaa kuvloi, tällä hänellä nuotte, siis sille täille lohpi, täille lohpi tarustit. Tälle huitee hänellä, että ahte maanat, että si ohtu saamikella, tällä tälle hui huitee hänellä, mui mui parke teko olle saike taan, että si kalke, että si kalke ohtu tän kella. Ahto mu edekta haalahte ahte aileliita ja saalaissa nihkula ahto si ei kalke tego raatsa semma olla tänä saami kerran ko ko moi lehtne raatsa tänä No ta pattis vuotta mitalle ta ei kumpaka Ta kerran se mitä oli joutus, muut se ei ollut arvoa, mitä se ei ollut nurkkaa staatuvasta. Tai kalkaa muu yhteen tuolla staatuvasta, tai ei saa mihin kaskaan. No 
bua verra, mas me, me, me taas sahta kehv vaatele taht min tahput. Eis min tahput, ele taht pöö kartanle raadzi, mille kes su juhvun tegu strehkanda kartan ja, ja tien peale taht strehkada ta, ta sarki, ta tuk min puhtsu ja vatsu lehki. No, te kodarasti tien, tien raadzi, te... Ah, thank you. So, uh, one of the taglines of uh, this particular episode is uh, rejected uh, boredom. And uh, let us hear um, you, Carl, uh, how you um, approached the story, how you chose it, and um, how you chose the director. Well, I was uh, chosen by the dire director and uh, Frederick. Uh, <clears throat> I came in after, I think they. They were the, the the project were started in Sweden and they they didn't find enough money and the directors there they uh, recommended Frederick to 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 contact me from Norway I think uh, and this is a story that I have personally been, been following for a decade it has been going on for it's a it's a it's a particular story that has been going on for more than a decade a, a, a border conflict between Norway and Sweden two of the most so-called peaceful countries in the world. Uh, and the, 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 the story is about, you know, up north of Europe, in, in Norway, Sweden, uh, Russia and Finland, we have a, a nation that crosses all those borders. And, and at least the Scandinavian and the Nordic countries, they agree that this is a nation, but there are different laws in all, all the states which divides the people of the Sami nation. So this is this is this this story goes back to the 1800s when Sweden was uh, the supreme state and Norway and Finland was a part of of uh, of that state, and uh, and uh, and the Sarivomak story that we are following here is is a story that kind of shows this dilemma that we have up uh, in these countries. Yeah. Uh, so how many uh, shooting days? did you have actually uh, for this particular episode and did you encounter any difficulties uh, we are still shoot we are still shooting uh, and we <laughs> and we have difficulties uh, because of the corona situation you know the, the the main team is in sweden because these people are living in sweden and but we have we have um, we have uh, sold this by when 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 the the Sami people they can cross even even because they have to follow their animals. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. How do you shoot? Because they have those yeah. restrictions. We, we we are standing by the border with the Norwegian team and 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 receiving them uh, into Norway and and leaving them at the Swedish border and the Swedish team uh, uh, is uh, so uh, so we and it has actually worked surprisingly. Well, I think, uh, and uh, I just uh, returned yesterday from Oslo because they are, they, this this case is now in, uh, going on in the Supreme Court of Norway uh, to solve this problem. There have been a lot of trials, and and there is the final countdown <laughs> of the Supreme Court. So I I came from there last night. Uh, 
I don't know actually how many uh, days we have been shooting so far. I, we just, you know, we have we have uh, we have been we have been especially on the Swedish side. We have been short of money for a long time. They have now got uh, a, a grant from the Swedish Film Institute that will secure their uh, finishing of the story and. Um, and uh, but we have all the time had the, 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 the been agreed that we, we, we should fight to, to finish this story no matter where, where what we uh, where the money are or, or uh, because we, 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 we have to finish it now and um, and of course uh, I guess you want to ask uh, what uh, what uh, the role of the of the media fund of, of the creative Europe and it has been uh, for Norway, it has been very important uh, because um, because we, uh, as a company, are involved in all the six episodes. We we are we are uh, we are dealing with uh, with uh, post production sound on all the episodes, uh, and and then we have applied uh, the Norwegian funds for for uh, for uh, for support to the series. But there is a rule in Norway that you have to. The, the, the public funds can only support 50% of the Norwegian budget. And in many cases, you can find a, a commercial fund that will, uh, uh, that will put in the rest. But this is not that kind of series. It's very hard to, 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 to tell a commercial fund that they should invest 50% of the, of the budget uh, in the film. But this, uh, because of Creative Europe, we have been able to 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 match this, uh, and um, yeah, so it has been very, very worked very well for us. Thank you. Can Sorry, I thank you. If I may just uh, continue to my next question, uh, since you were caught up in a not uh, grateful timing in terms of the COVID nineteen, and uh, it must be quite a challenge, especially for the directors. Uh, to do the editing uh, and, and, and especially all of you to meet over all those Zoom Skypes uh, still, you did manage to, to, to uh, edit the episodes and you, you already have now two of them, uh, Distinguished Film Festivals, but maybe I, I, I start with Tiha to hear um, her personal experience because it must be the first time to do something like that so intensely and, and uh, a bit stressful. Yeah, uh, due to all these co-production relationships that we're talking about, obviously the post-production was not uh, going to take place in Croatia. Uh, we started editing in Brussels on 1st March 2020. I went into off-world. Some episodes we were already seeing rough cuts of some other episodes. There were the, Annabelle was there, uh, Isabel, who is doing Liberland, was there. The teams were there. Every day the work conditions started changing a little due to crawling of COVID-19 towards Europe. And two weeks into work with, uh, with Tess, the, my editor, Belgium editor, um, the WHO proclaimed the pandemic. So it was a Thursday when, uh, when the, or Wednesday when the pandemic was uh, proclaimed. Nobody really believed that we would shut down, but we were in the middle of what was going on. I remember we got some, like, as every day conditions of work were changing a little. On one day we said everyone in the building has their own cups and you have to put your name and we don't mix cups because we have to stay away from certain, it was nothing like this now. And I remember, okay, I'm leaving Brussels. It's obvious, Ljubo and uh, Slovenian co-producer Viva were like, you have to come home. So within two days, I was already going home and I remember leaving my cup there when I'm back. So I guess some archeologist is going to have to cut, <laughs> dig it out one day. Then everything changed obviously, because we, we didn't know what was going to happen. We just shut down. I think it was the, a big shock for everyone. And then uh, I guess the reality hit and uh, Frederick decided we have to find ways to work it out. I, I, was, uh, I was lucky enough that I, I had met my editor. We worked for two weeks together. We already went, talked about the, 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 the material a lot together and the process had started and it was such a good thing that we had this physical uh, period in the same time in the same place at least for two weeks and then we resumed over skype and i guess you have to approach these things which is with as much humor as you can and tess and i we were joking we should 
on the on the credits it should say this film was edited over skype during a world pandemic and in between earthquakes so uh it was it was a challenge and uh, i think uh, financing wise uh, it's a big challenge because it absolutely prolongs the process uh, my editor obviously doesn't speak croatian or slovenian which the majority of the film is in and he needs my input for pre precision in cutting I'm on the other side with an unstable link, and uh, so we would work, he would send exports. I don't have the editing programs, I don't edit myself, I'm on the other side. It was, it was just a very big challenge, but we, we managed, and the sound, uh, as Carl said, was done in Norway. So you learn you can do a lot of things when you have to, but uh, definitely not something I would recommend or would wish uh, to continue. But yeah, within the circumstances, I have to say, I was, I, I, I have to be grateful that also we had most of the material shot and that we were able in the small gates which were opening between Croatia and Slovenia and, and Bosnia and Croatia when we could or couldn't cross the border, we were still able to finish, uh, I think, another week of shooting for additional materials. So crazy times. But we have it in the docu docu fest, so perfect. Yeah. Uh, um, is it uh, Frederick the same editor for all episodes, or um, how did you? Uh, because there are six episodes, so it's quite uh, diverse in terms of the teams and the countries. Uh, so how did you split, and uh, how did you make such a complicated schedule with all of them different? Exactly. No, it's feasible. It's it's not so complicated. What you want, of course, is the talents of collaborating. For me, a co-production co -production makes only sense when you combine the work of talents. Uh, we can also co-produce in Norway and ask Norway just paying for the sandwiches in the, in the hotels, but that doesn't make sense. I mean, and, 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 and cultural funding doesn't allow that. And uh, um, so you make a split at the moment and it's so important that that on the spot uh, the director is 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 uh, is uh, connected to the subject, uh, and then we see what you what else you can do. Maybe sometimes it's the UP, uh, but we decided from the very early beginning that all uh, editing would happen in Brussels. It would also be a place where we bring everybody together, where you can co-work on the project. And then the next step was uh, going to Tromsø in uh, northern Norway to do the sound editing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we did it all online at the end, as you know. Um, very special is, by the way, Annabelle's film. Um, before the lockdown, we only went on two research trips and everything was packed. And I think a few days before the lockdown, we cancelled everything. Yeah, I remember also that I met Tiha in that week, uh, and we were preparing to go and shoot for about two weeks. Uh, and uh, there were some rumors about COVID-19, and uh, we were like, oh, but it's just going to be a regular flu. Uh, but it wasn't, of course. And um, I remember that the sound engineer called me, yeah, what about this COVID-19? Are we still going? I said, yeah, 99% yes. Uh, but then the next day, they uh, were announcing lockdown, so I had to call and say, okay, I think I made a little mistake here. Uh, so we cannot go. And then it was very tricky because yeah, I, 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 I was making a film about a border and all borders were suddenly all shut. So it was really uh, special. Um, so I, I was waiting till the point that the borders would open a bit, but I was also scared that um, yeah, I, I don't like the masks in the image and I was scared that everybody would wear masks and the image would be super ugly because of that. Uh, but also how people would um, uh, interact uh, if they would be scared, suspicious, things like that. But in the end, I must say it was a super great experience. Uh, we had um, less restriction in August and then we went for the full 17 days and we shot uh, everything so uh, we prepared from a distance of course before uh, but there was a lot of stress and in the end i'm super happy that it worked out thank you uh just something um uh to share with you and uh, it's going to be very um 
uh, interesting for the authors because uh, um, it was announced uh, when I was moderating another panel on Tuesday. So the European Commission is going to announce a pilot project. Uh, they are still deciding on how to do it, but between two to three million of euros just for the authors in order to uh, boost this collaboration that uh, is, is going to be highlighted in the new program. It's not going to be under the media, but it's going to be a quite uh, uh, a good starting point for all the authors at the European level together and to, to, to work in the teams and to develop their own stories. It, it doesn't matter if it's regarding the film or TV series uh, as such, but it's just something that you already tested it, so you can just continue to make uh, 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 number two with other six episodes if they're existing because amazingly enough like i would never thought that uh, norway and sweden would have a, such a uh, uh, intriguing um, issue uh, uh, and i always thought that it always happens here <laughs> uh, in, in 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 the region uh, in the balkan region but uh, you always do it probably more peacefully and uh, uh, but still, uh, it, it does have a, uh, an effect. Um, maybe um, uh, uh, I would like to hear since um, they, they were not part of the media TV programming scheme, but just maybe Frederick, if you can uh, or Annabelle jointly mention uh, also the, the rest of the episodes and just some short uh, highlights uh, to yeah. have an idea. So, just to continue on what you're saying, is that we have to know that Europe. The, the freedom and the, and, the, and the peace is very relative. Huh? We are, it's not only Balkan, the whole of Europe is a very uh, 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 precious continent, but also a very vulnerable continent. So uh, um, uh, there are many of those stories to grab. Uh, and in this series, we chose for um, another one, which is, um, um, Oh, please, sorry, I'm a little bit confused, sorry. Uh, uh, first, I will end with Liberland. Liberland is the Czech political uh, person who established a new micronation on a heap of sand in the Danube River uh, between uh, Croatia and, uh, uh, and Serbia. Uh, he wants to attract some rich people to invest there. So that's, they, they just returned today, uh, filming the last uh, shooting days. Um, then we have uh, Before They Meet. It is a film about Kaliningrad Oblast. Kaliningrad is a, a little exclave of the Russian Federation, which is completely surrounded by the European Union. Um, it's about the bird research station, uh, where they catch birds from the air and they give them a little ring and hands and identity. So they make them into Russian birds. But a few miles further, there is also a Lithuanian bird research station and they catch the same birds but give them a Lithuanian identity. Um, so a certain moment they figure out that doesn't make sense and they start to see if they can collaborate with each other. Um, I spoke in Liberland, uh, now I'm thinking about uh, the uh, uh, yeah, Anna Savchenko who was mentioned in the beginning by Tiha. She made a film about Belarus and uh, Lithuania. Uh, that border is called Stalin's pipe because um, the border is very strange, very strange forms. And the legend says that uh, Stalin put this pipe on the map while the moment they were drawing the, the borders and nobody dared to move the pipe. So they drew the border around the pipe. Uh, so it's a very strange location where people, families, villages are really cut into by a wire because it's the outskirts, the really end of the European Union and Belarus is the last dictatorship as it is called of Europe. So it's a very strange area. It's a very emotional, strong film as well. Great. Thank you. Um, and uh, uh, I would like to also see, uh, uh, since we are coming 
closer to the end. Is there anything that you would like to share with us in the audience? Some, some not juicy, but interesting field uh, stories while shooting. Something that is uh, positive, unique, uh, special for, for your episode. So maybe I'll start with um, uh, Carl from Norway. I don't, I don't know uh, about the, the, the shooting, but uh, I, I, from a Norwegian point of view, or from my point of view, uh, living in, in the north of Scandinavia, uh, doing online, working online is the normal business. So nothing is, no, nothing has changed. Uh, we, 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 uh, we edit in the south of Norway in, or in Denmark or Sweden, and we do the post uh, in, uh, somewhere where we have to travel for uh, at least uh, half a day to get there uh, so so and uh, so we have been doing this forever so 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 uh, there there are a few difficulties uh, with the covid but a lot of it is kind of normal uh tika do, do you have also something to share like um, some special um, moment or something that was emotional for you uh while you were doing research and and shooting so much to say <laughs> everything was emotional i'm an emotional person i don't know i guess uh i was thinking about it the other day when i was talking to someone the two most emotional things in in a grand scheme of things is the which which touch me emotionally and which i think are the emotional point of the whole t thing that we did on croatia slovenian border is the injustice of the fact that the wire is there and everyday encounters with people whose whose lives are directly influenced by that wire and on the other side the conditions uh, of illegal migrants on the route so many nights of uh, me and my crew staying up late at the end of the shoot just thinking over everything we've seen and a big responsibility on communicated that towards the audience i don't know there were many anecdotes <laughs> my crew went, Tell us went one. home well it's not much fun i have to say <laughs> what <laughs> many nights we went home hungry because we would give out all the food to people. For example, we met on the road. My crew had to hide all the food because they knew that at the end of the day with the adrenaline dropping, only then we would realize we have no food and no water because we've given it out. And, but I, I don't know, there is, it isn't a fun, it isn't a fun process, but it's a very meaningful one. It can be, I hope. Now that the film is out, we will see. Uh, and it definitely needs to be documented and, and told, uh, because those are the stories that uh, we we need to um, we need to see, and uh, uh, and we need to learn uh, and to leave it for the next generations that are yet to come. Um, thank you, um, uh, Annabel. Um, would you like to share something with us? Um, I mean, there were many nice moments. It's very hard to pick one. Uh, I think for me, what was the most surprising thing is that um, the I, I already knew that the uh, Irish and Northern Irish people were super open and communicative, but I've never imagined that they would be so open and so spontaneous. So to me, that was the most um, uh, surprising element. So in fact, uh, they made my life easier during the shoot as they were very cooperative um, and super enthusiastic. So um, I think uh, there were a lot of um, different encounters uh, that really surprised me. And um, yeah, I think that that to me is maybe the nicest way to, uh, the nicest thing that happened to me is, is the encounter that uh, each day uh, by taking the ferry, I would not know who I would meet. Of course, uh, I met before some characters which were fixed, but at the same time, I was looking for um, little stories on the ferry, uh, but I didn't know on forehand what was going to happen. And that uh, was always super nice and very re refreshing. So, would you like to add something, Frederick? As yeah, well to I, I, I've been visiting all the locations. And um, two years ago, I was together with Callum 
in northern Norway, uh, the place where the Sami people from Sweden would settle down for a few weeks. And um, the final day, Kala was not there anymore. And I was alone there with a camera on a six-wheel quad going up in the mountains with a guy of 65 years old. I think he was driving like crazy with me in the back uh, on a quad uh, in the middle of the night uh, when it's still a uh, clear sky. Uh, nobody, nothing, only tons of reindeer around me. I must say that was for me uh, a moment I felt really little, really humble. Uh, surrounded by an extreme beauty, uh, underlining for me once again the beauty of this continent, the diversity of this continent, and um, humble as well because I did not know about all those stories before. And for me, it is it was a confirmation that this series were relevant and that they should really be told and shared amongst the audience. At least uh, through through uh, and via European film and films in general, we can uh, go beyond all those borders that are either imposed on us. That uh, especially in this in, during this COVID nineteen times are really affecting us uh, deeply, uh, and uh, uh, it's definitely uh, really uh, your but each of your uh, participation success story in it. Um, uh, and Ljubo, uh, what would you like to highlight uh, from this project? What did you learn? And what are you going to take uh, from this project? Almost on every project uh, during the realization, um, I'm thinking myself that this would be like my last project. And next thing I'll do, I'll go to agriculture or something because there are so, so many ups and downs, especially on uh, long-term pr uh, projects uh, like this. Uh, but in the end, uh, persistence, uh, stubbornness wins. You have to be persistent in life. And I think that is one of the, the rare qualities that, uh, that can uh, uh, get you to a goal. And uh, Frederick and the rest of the, the, the team, crew, uh, directors and, and co-producers, I think in the end that we were all just uh, uh, really stubborn to do this. So this is a, like a lesson again about making films. Uh, be stubborn, uh, make films. Uh, what is the plan for the um, uh, for the creation episode? And then I'm going to come back to uh, Norwegian and overall uh, Omnibus. But what is uh, after premiering at Dogfest? Uh, what are the next plans? When can we see it in Croatia? Or how, how did you um, schedule it, plan it? Yes. Uh, uh, well, they, there will be two more festivals. One will be in uh, Austria. And uh, the second one is uh, Zagreb Docs here. And uh, we are waiting for uh, uh, measures to see what will be with the measures, although the cinemas are, are working, uh, at least here in Croatia. Uh, I think I've, I've heard yesterday then uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, the measures should be uh, a bit uh, less, uh, I don't know how to say, harder or... In, in Croatia, we'll see how to make uh, some cinema screenings, how to, how to uh, um, achieve that. And uh, the film will go to festivals uh, in, this year, in this year, definitely. This is the plan. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Carl, uh, what is that you're going to take with you uh, from this um, wonderful experience? Uh, I think uh, personally, I, I've done. I've been involved in quite a lot of co-productions uh, uh, in my career, and I, I, personally, I would say this is the, the best experience because so it, it has been more difficult uh, in terms of the number of uh, nations involved. But I think I think the way, and that's Frederick's. Uh, 
honest uh, that 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 uh, it has been it uh, it has been coordinated uh, so so well and and we have been in touch all the time and 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 involved in the, in 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 all the pro processes all the time and and I think that is uh, it's not always like that in in a co-production sometimes you 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 meet early and in the end and uh, but this has been a real co-production it has been a, a, uh, very very nice and uh, and um, uh, yeah I think uh, that that is uh, the main thing and and when it comes to uh, to um, distribution we we are uh, we, we we have a, an agreement in Sweden for, with Swedish television we are discussion discussing it with Norwegian television and also uh, another uh, a, 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 a newspaper that is uh showing uh, documentaries uh, on their online platform um but uh, for me i think it's uh, it's a goal to get um a show of all the six films together and 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 maybe some kind of discussion like this uh, so so i'm i'm trying to to get in touch with the the uh, the possible festivals in in Norway, where you could show all all the, the films in one package, because I think that's the strongest contribution. It's not the the the, the local or regional film. That it, it's of course great to make a, a single film from this region with this story, but I think the big thing is the the, the package, the borderline package. Uh, we are all coming uh, towards the end. We kind of prolonged it because it's it's rather interesting topic and there is always not enough time to, to share uh, all your stories but I'm really honored and grateful that uh, it was a, a premier discussion with, with all of you uh, and it's just the perfect timing before uh, the new program is going to be introduced and tackling the slogan push the boundaries so uh, uh, your success story is the example how uh, we can do it uh, I am sure it was not easy and it was quite emotional but uh, um, uh, I'm grateful for your work because this is something that needs to be told and uh, uh, shared among each other and thanks to, to, to the film uh, as, as I always highlighted and repeat myself uh, we can forget that we exist in borders we are all part of the European Union and we bring with our stories and our personalities to the cultural diversity uh, and I would, um, uh, before I, I give you the last wording, uh, Frederick, uh, uh, I really thank also my first panelist, uh, your divans, uh, also my media desks uh, from Norway and Belgium, Flanders, and uh, Creation Audiovisual Film Center, Norwegian Film Institute, uh, and uh, uh, Flanders uh, uh, Film Fund, because without them, also all this would not be uh, uh, possible. Uh, and uh, um, Frederick, uh, do you have something uh, mm, to say for the ending? Um, some nice uh, uh, wording that we will all take for our weekend and um, yes, think about it. Yeah, no, no. no. Um, well, first of all, I'm 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 uh, extremely grateful that I was uh, being uh, collaborating with so many people and talents from all over Europe. I mean, without them, it was not happening anyway. So that is a very important thing. And I thank them all for the patience and the trust because um, it was not easy at all. But today I'm very happy and I would like to encourage everybody to indeed go beyond those boundaries of languages, cultures, religions and countries and to collaborate because for me, that's the only way, or the best way maybe, to tell transnational and relevant stories. Thank you. Perfect wording for, for ending. Uh, wishing you all wonderful um, day and good luck with all your stories. Uh, and I look forward to really seeing you prime time TV on every single national <laughs> broadcaster. 
and we definitely need them also to boost uh, our projects uh, in terms of uh, our co-productions and collaborations. Thank you, dear audience, uh, as well, who were also uh, patient with us and supporting us. And I look forward to another meeting, this time live. Okay, thank you. Thank Bye. You.